Welcome. Let's look at an important aspect of pragmatics in the following, the phenomenon of Dijkses. And let us discuss the following questions. What is Dijkses? And what are the central deictic elements that are used for referencing? According to the German psychologist Karl Bühler, the method of relating to the spatio-temporal context of the utterance can be labeled as deixis, the Greek term for pointing with words. Deixis is basically a speaker-centered notion where the central person is a speaker. Well, here we have two speakers, speaker A and speaker B where the central place is the speaker's location and where the central time is the time at which the speaker utters a particular sentence or produces a particular utterance and where the central discourse element is the one containing the speaker's utterance. Let us find out how these examples of this little dialogue are realized in an actual example. Well, here we have our four elements, our four deictic labels, time, place and person. Let's now associate the elements of this short dialogue to these labels. Now, first of all, we can associate you with person deixis. This is clearly an element of discourse deixis. Here we have another you, another element that relates to a person. The same applies to me. Then that is another discourse dixis element. And before is clearly temporal, so it's time dixis. I, again, person dixis. Well, here relates to the place. And then is another element of time dixis. So this is how to analyze a little dialogue in terms of deictic elements. Let us now look at these types of deixis in more detail. Let's start with person deixis. Now, person deixis is normally realized by personal pronouns and it is concerned with encoding the roles of the participants in the speech situation in which a given utterance was produced. Person deixis involves the speaker's reference to himself, that is, the first person. So, for example, elements such as I and me are typical elements of person. Dykes is where the speaker refers to himself, or we and us, so the first person singular and plural pronouns. Person Dykes also involves the speaker's reference to the addressees, that is, the second person. So, this means in terms of English pronouns, you in the singular and you in the plural. And last but not least, we have elements that the speaker uses to refer to other persons and entities. So, typically, the third person pronouns, he, him, she, her, then we have it, and of course, they and them in the plural. Person deixis depends on the speaker as the deictic center. As speakers switch, so does the reference point. For example, if someone called Linda is the speaker, then I, the first person singular, refers to her. And if Paul is the current speaker, then I is the person deictic element relating to him and so on. Pronoun usage can encode information about the social identities or relationships of the participants in the conversation. This is often called social dixis. For instance, many European languages distinguish between familiar and polite pronouns, often referred to as TV, because in French there's a distinction between tu and vous. And in German, in my mother tongue, we draw a distinction between du and Z, where Z, the third person plural, is the more polite form. I would certainly address you, my audience, 
with Z and would say something like, Ich begrüße Sie. I welcome you. Okay, so much for person dikes. Let's now continue with place dikes. Locative deictic expressions denote the spatial locations of people and objects relative to the participants in the speech event. Speakers use them for the following purposes. Deictic terms that can be used to identify an entity include, for example, the set of demonstrative determiners such as this and these or that and those for uh, more remote items. Deictic terms can also be used to inform the addressee about the location of an entity. Speakers typically use locative adverbs such as here and there or prepositions such as above and below to denote such cases. In some special cases speakers do not identify or inform by means of locative deictic express expressions but they use them to well to acknowledge certain locations of an entity. In English the deictic verbs of motion come and go are often used in this respect. So let's first of all write down come and go and then illustrate this by means of an example. Compare the following two sentences. In the sentence Paul went into the bedroom we have to acknowledge that the speaker who utters this sentence was not in the bedroom. Whereas if someone says Paul came into the bedroom this acknowledges the speaker was in the bedroom himself. Most languages draw a distinction between at least this sort of spatial deictic system. There is a distinction drawn between proximal deictic elements such as here and distal or non-proximal elements such as there. However, many languages carry much more elaborate divisions of space. Spanish, for example, makes a three-term distinction in its spatial deictic system where English only has two terms. Well, let's look at them here. That's Spanish. Now, in Spanish, we have something like aquí, ahí and ali, which means something like here, there and over there. And in English, well, we also have here and there and, well, if you include archaic vocab uh, vocabulary systems of English, archaic words, you might want to add yonder, which is equivalent to over there. So we have here, there and yonder, also a sort of three-term system in English, if you include archaic versions of English. Let's now look at time dikes. Deictic reference to time involves locating points or intervals on the time axis using the moment of utterance U as a reference point. On the time axis we can identify several deictic elements. For example, we can identify elements that are used to denote an event that occurred before the moment of utterance, that is before U. So elements such as before or yesterday or last year. Then we have elements that can be used to denote the time of utterance itself. Something like now, today or even this afternoon. Well and last but not least we have elements such as tomorrow or soon which relate to events that occur after the time of utterance. In a conversation, all participants share the same deictic temporal origin. They all have the same now. In fact, all languages allow the expression of time relative to the act of speaking. The most pervasive means include time adverbials, like the ones given over here, in English now and then, yesterday, this year, and so on. 
and of course tense. Let's look at tense for a while. Here I have three sentences. Let's relate them to two events. The moment where the event occurs, denoted by E, and the moment of utterance, we've already assigned the character U to it. Now, in John wrote the letter, we clearly have an example of past tense use. The moment of the event, that is the event when John actually wrote the letter, precedes the moment of the utterance U. So we have this sort of relationship, E before U. In John is writing the letter, we have the present tense continuous form. The moment of the event E precedes or coincides with the moment of utterance U. So we can denote this relationship by means of U equals or before E. So in these two sentences, the speaker's time of utterance serves as the reference time for the deictic use of tense, pointing towards the past and the present respectively. The third utterance, John had written a letter when Linda arrived, uses a third time, R, in the past. The reference time, R, when Linda actually wrote the letter. And to this event in the past, when Linda wrote the letter, the event E and the event U can be related. Now, in this past perfect construction, the moment of event E precedes the reference time R, and this in turn precedes the moment of the utterance U. While the precedence relation between E and R is non deictic it is independent of the speakers now, there is a deictic temporal relationship between U and R. Let us finally look at discourse dyxis. Discourse dyxis concerns the use of deictic expressions within an utterance as a form of orientation inside an unfolding discourse in which that utterance is located. The deictic expressions indicate the relation of the utterance to future or past elements of the discourse or to a conversation or a text. Making reference to portions of the discourse itself can be accomplished by means of time deictic words such as last as in the last paragraph or next as in the next chapter. Well, here are three examples that illustrate the use of discourse deictic elements. Let's start with this sentence. At this point, it is useful to return to our previous example. Now, this element, this, of course, the discourse element, this, refers to the current portion of the discourse. So, let us use or symbolize this by means of this symbol. So, it is, refers to the current portion of the discourse. In, you will be interested in this problem. We have another case. Now, here, we have reference to the forthcoming discourse element. Let's use this symbol to denote this use of a discourse deictic element. And in the example, that's the most ridiculous, or oh, we have a mistake here, ridiculous excuse I've ever heard. Here we refer to a preceding discourse element so, an adequate symbol would be this one. And using a deictic expression, I could now say, that's the end of this e-lecture. I hope my overview of this topic was clear enough. Perhaps you can try on your own now. Take any dialogue and identify the deictic elements within it. So, thanks for now. See you again soon.